Hello brothers and sisters in Christ. I just wanted to do a quick prayer request update that we prayed eight days ago on 3-14-2024 about the brethren in Belgium. Before we get in that, go ahead and open your King James Bibles to 2 Timothy chapter 1. We'll start in verse 6. Wherefore I put thee in remembrance that thou stir up the gift of God which is in thee by the putting on of, of my hands. For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. What's this for? We often quote that verse about God hasn't given us the spirit of fear, but what's that for? What's the courage supposed to be for? What's the next verse? Verse 8. Be not thou therefore ashamed of the testimony of, of the Lord, nor of me his prisoner. God, that when it says, for God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of sound mind, doesn't matter what's going on in the world, we stand firm to this book, the Word of God. We stand true to the, te to the gospel. Our testimonies where God saved us and set us on a new path, gave us a new life. We stand firm no matter what. Right? That's the strength that God's talking about. The testimony of the Lord, nor of me his prisoner, but be thou partakers of the afflictions of the gospel according to the power of God. Standing for God, standing for what's right, it's gonna, the world's not going to go along with it. We're just to live our life, and there's times where we're gonna, it's going to cost us. And I want to point out, brothers and sisters, Christ, in, in America, it costs us a lot to stand for the truth. But we really don't know what true, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, being attacked for our stands. Being persecuted, that's the word I'm looking for. We don't really understand persecution that much here in America. Yes, we know cost. It's cost me, I've lost my daughter because I chose God first, His perfect written word and my testimony the gospel of my salvation, the man who saved me, Jesus Christ. There's one mediator between man and God, the man Christ Jesus, who is God the Father, manifest in the flesh. I've lost my daughter to the world. I lost my wife to the world. I'm losing brethren. I lost my mentor to the world. I'm losing brethren to the world. I've lost lot family members. Don't want to talk to me, hang out with me. There's a cost, and we see the cost here in America, but that fear is not here. I'm, I'm serious. When it comes to persecution, we're not sitting here wondering, are they going to come knock down our door and drag us off to prison to have us taken out to a firing squad, to have us beheaded, have us uh, nailed to a wooden stake and burned? That's not there. But that's still there in other countries. And we're going to be talking about this. The gospel according to the power of God, who hath saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given us in Christ Jesus before the world began. And Jesus talks about that, that people would die for him. There, there's some, are you willing to die for Jesus Christ? We talk about that a lot here in America. Are you willing to die? Are you willing to die? Oh yeah, I'm willing to die. It's easy to say now. But there might come a time where you're going to, you know, put up, they say put up or shut up. There's going to come a time where you're going to have to either act on what you just said, oh yeah, I'll die for Jesus Christ, or you're going to conform to the world to keep from dying. You're going to give in. You're going to start being ashamed of the testimony of Jesus Christ. You're going to start backing down. And we've already seen that a lot here in America, people backing down when the pressure gets too hot. But real persecution where to the point where you're a fear of your life, afflictions, I, I admit, it's, it's painful when you lose family members and friends. It broke my heart when I lost my daughter to the world, and it broke my heart even more when I lost her in death. It broke my heart when I lost my wife to the world. She chose the world, and I had to, I had to stand for the Lord and His perfect written word. It hurts when you lose family members to the world, and... and and you're praying for them, and you're trying to witness to them, and they die, and at that point, you can't pray for them anymore. They're, they're done. They're in God's hands. And if they died in unbelief, rejecting the true plan of salvation found in the King James Bible, they went to hell. There's no sugarcoating it. They're in hell right now. Okay. 
we have a cost. The whole point, without me rambling too much, is we've got a cost. And that cost, we can see here in America. But real persecution, today their idea of persecution is a lot of backbiting and whispering on YouTube, the gossip that goes on YouTube, or name calling. That's real persecution. Uh, no. No. It, the only time the name calling hurts is when it comes from a brother in Christ where you had good fellowship and now you're estranged. Remember we talked about that word in the last study we did on uh, loving the Lord thy God with all thy mind. You know, being estranged in my mind, being estranged. When you have a brother in Christ where you're, you're, you have a brother that's close, a friend that's closer than a brother, the Bible says, and, and you're fellowshipping together, you love one another, you're praying for one another, and you're going over the Bible with one another, you're standing for the truth, absolute truth together, and then some one of them starts falling into the world, starts compromising. And the next thing you know, you become estranged, and that person turns on you like a ravening wolf, and that's called betrayal. And they start, you know, name calling you and everything. That's per that hurts. Oh boy, does that hurt. But still not the fear of, like the life fear of persecution where your life is at stake. We really don't have that in America yet. Yet. But we forget. The reason I keep pointing this out, because we, t if you haven't watched that uh, prayer request eight days ago called Quick Prayer Request 314-2024, go watch it and you understand what I'm talking about. And I'm just going to give a quick update of how it went. Just to let you know that what some of the brethren are going through in these other countries. Some of us here in America, or maybe you're in uh, Great Britain, um, or in some countries that, have, that are very lax, like religious, so-called religious freedom. But you got to be careful. There's still brethren in countries that they're having a hard time. They, they actually are going through persecution and we need to pray for them. And that's the whole point of the prayer request is pray, pray, pray. And I still want you to pray for my, our brothers and sisters in Christ in Belgium. It says, hello brother, we are now back from our mini trip to the neighboring countries. This was a very exhausting and difficult journey since more than half of this neighboring country also consists of the Catholic faith. The hardcore Catholics. What, what I want to say real quick is um, what seems to, what I'm seeming to get from these countries when it comes to the Catholicism is no different than uh, these uh, Middle Eastern countries with Muslims and everything. You go there and you try to be a Christian, they kill you on the spot almost. You go there trying to be anything but the religion that they want and you're killed on the spot. Now, I'm, I'm only for the true religion. I'm against all false religions. I understand that. But with true biblical Christianity, we're not supposed to live by the sword. The temporal. We're supposed to be focused on the eternal. We're supposed to be trying to see people's souls get saved. And I know that when I'm witnessing to somebody I care about that's lost, if they die in their sins, they go to hell. I don't want to see anybody go to hell. I don't. I want to see them go to heaven. So I want to preach the truth to them. I don't want to kill them physically. And a true Bible-believing Christian doesn't. But the Catholic Church, they're all for killing people that go against them. So is the Muslim religion and these in the Middle Eastern countries and everything. And here in America, they make it out where it's like, it's just so peaceful. No, it isn't. It's a show. A lot of these organized religions, they are not peaceful. As far as they live by the sword. Convert or die. The mob... The mob. Remember what Jesus... I was just reading in um, Matthew, Mark... I'm in Mark right now. I was reading Mark 15, where, the, where the, they've got the crowd all riled up. Crucify Jesus! Crucify! They get the mob all riled up. Kill that Christian! Kill that Christian! They get the mob riled up. So these countries they're dealing in are predominantly Catholic, hardcore Catholic. They need our prayer, brother, says Christ. Since more than half our neighboring country also consists of the Catholic faith, we have been able to hold our own with the help of, of our Lord. Praise God. We just read that. Also, the Bible says, I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. Through Christ. If you're going through Christ and God has called you to do it, He'll give you the strength to do it. It's that simple. 
We were invited by people who wanted to know more in addition to the, their existing faith in which they were fully doctrinated. Talking about the Catholic faith. We spoke for them in a large hall of almost 200 people, including many Catholic priests and demonstrators who wanted to boycott this lecture. In other words, the word got out. <laughs> and people that weren't invited showed up. People who didn't want the truth showed up. With a, with a frightened heart, but supported by our Lord, we began our readings and how the true Word of God has changed us through a different Bible than the ones compiled by the Catholic ruler, the Pope. From the beginning of the lecture, we received comments from the priests who were present in the room. I've been there where you have people that when you're trying to just, you're trying to preach the truth, they're trying to cut you off and they're trying to make comments, you know. Basically, they're trying to, if you, it's like having a preacher that's preaching. Let me save my spot here. It's like having a preacher that's preaching and they're on a roll and you're just so joyful and so happy. I'm trying to preach the truth and someone keeps cutting in. What are they trying to do? They're trying to, to mess up your heart, get you to stumble and trying to ruin your preaching. Uh, when your testimony, they do it all the time. People have had these testimonies where they go to tell family members they're so happy and they're so joyful about the true plan of salvation that God saved me, a wretched sinner like me, God saved me. And they're just, they have this joy and, this, and they, just, they want to preach the gospel to their family members. I want to see you get saved. And they cut them off, they, they tear them down, and the next thing you know, they walk away hurt, sorrowful. They started out joyful, preaching the gospel. God saved me, here's my testimony, I'm so grateful. And then you walk away sorrowful. That's what they, the lost world does a lot. And you got to stay in there, brothers of Christ. Stay strong. Don't, don't give up. Don't give up. Some people can try to take away your joy. And that's what they're doing. They're trying to interrupt the talk. And they're trying to take away their, their, their strength and their joy. And I'll start, go back to the beginning. From the beginning of the lecture, we received comments from the priests who were present in the room from the beginning... We were called heretics, distorters of the Holy Scriptures, and cult leaders. These are Bible-believing Christians in uh, Belgium. My wife was close to despair before we could even start the lecture. We prayed to our Lord before we started and asked Him to help us to endure all the recriminations and to let them hear that their faith is based on pagan practices and that many verses in the Bible and their Bibles have been omitted, which is true, and rewritten. Amen, brother. That's, that's just the best way I can, I can explain these Bible perversions. It's the best way to do it. They subtracted from the Word of God and they've rewritten, they've added to the Word of God. They've changed it, and they've added theirs, what they thought, what they want. Okay? They've omitted and rewritten. Similar, many people used to be murdered because they rebelled against the Catholic faith proclaimed by the Pope. And a lot of people forget history. They've tried to rewrite history. The Catholic Church has killed millions and millions of Christians, and they're still doing it to this very day. They're imprisoning them and everything, and a lot of countries. Christians, are not just through Catholicism, but her daughters, false religions, daughter, her daughters that the Catholic Church has created. They've either created the, the religion, or they've infiltrated the religion and made it line up somewhat with their religion. So someday they can bring all religions back under the authority of Rome. That's the Jesuit indoctrinated order, to bring all authorities back under the Rome. But Christians are still being thrown in jail. The key's being thrown away. They, they end up getting killed in jail. It was an accident. Or they end up killing themselves. Christians are still being killed. It's a fearful thing to preach the Word of God in some countries. It's a fearful thing. But praise God for the men and women that... Uh, the men that God calls into ministry and the women that God calls to help those men in ministry that... If you're putting that, that they have the strength to still do what God calls them to do, no matter how tough it is. Kind of like Jonah being called to preach in Nineveh, 
Well, they hate the Jews. They're the enemies of the Jews. They could kill me. I still want you to go preach to Nineveh. No, no, I want Tarsus. So many people choose Tarsus, because that's easier. Proclaimed by the Pope, we told them the horrible fact in front of all the priests that people were burned at the stake if they did not obey the order of the Romans. I, I look at you like that because that takes a lot of courage. It takes a lot of courage. That's a, a fearful thing to point out why all those Catholic priests and everything are there. That they murdered Christians, real Christians. They murdered people who stood for the truth, the Word of God. Apparently it was already a step too far for the priests in the room and we saw them talking to each other about things that we thought if we continued this about things we thought if we continued this that we might never go home again. So we adapted our reading in this area and tells them about our Bible that has brought us the true faith. I'm talking about the King James Bible. We had already asked in advance before the lecture if we could also present our Bible. They have to, people don't seem to get that. The King James Bible is outlawed in the Catholic Church. It's outlawed. There's, there's testimonies of Bible-believing, God-fearing brethren that when they had lost family members in the Catholic pagan system, invite them somewhere and they want them to speak in the church, whether it's a child christening or marriage or whatever the ceremony is, they come there and they say, we want to read from the King James Bible. And they ask the priest and everything, saying, we're going to read from the King James Bible. And they get told they're not allowed to read from this book from their pulpits. This book is outlawed. You've got to get permission. We could also present our Bibles. After much deliberation, we were allowed to present our Bible very briefly. Praise God. Brothers is Christ. Those of, those of us that were praying for him, praise God. Keep praying for him. And then we were forced to leave because we noticed that the priests and the demonstrators were making a plan to cause us harm. Persecution. Brother says Christ, they need our prayer. We think we understand persecution. I remember, like I said, there's things I disagree with Peter Ruckman, but he's a brother in Christ, and I love my brother in Christ. And there's things that I agree with Peter Ruckman. And I remember what Peter Ruckman said once is that he doesn't know what persecution is. He's had it easy. Brother says Christ, those of us in ministry, I've had it easy. I don't know what persecution is. I haven't had people knock down my door. I haven't gone to town and handed someone a gospel track and thought my life was, was being threatened by handing someone a gospel track, by telling someone about the Bible version issue. I, wasn't never, I haven't been to the position where I'm fearful of my life doing that. There's times where they hated it. I've had neighbors lose their temper and, and their spit was flying and they walk away and, and my heart's pounding because of confrontation. I have, you know, I, I'm not really good with confrontation. But my life, I didn't have, my life wasn't on the line. I wasn't fearing for my life. Let's keep going because there's, the, the, I know it seems like really down, it's really down, but there's a miracle. We're going to keep reading. God opens doors. He closes doors and He opens doors. Let's keep going. We didn't feel safe there. We had suggested to the people who wanted to come that evening if we should speak to them afterwards at another place. Praise the Lord. That's a smart thing. Okay, those who want the truth, come over here. Without priests and other inconveniences, the mob, without the mob, there's a time uh, in the past, brothers and Christ, where people had to meet in people's homes. You want to know the truth? I'll meet in your home. Paul met in people's homes. I know, understand, a brother in Christ lost his faith in actually going out and preaching the gospel, door-to-door -door gospel tract. And I fell for it. Door-to-door -door gospel tracting is not biblical. Yet Paul did go door-to-door. -door. He did go to people's homes and preach the gospel. Why? Because you had to get away from the mob. You had to get away from the organized religion. And you had to get to people one-on-one -on -one that wanted to know the truth. It was in their homes. He met at people's homes to preach the gospel. He met at people's homes to save sinners to preach the word of God. And we get so kicked because we're against the Babel building system that's become a business, and so has a lot of YouTube ministries, become a business. 
and they've compromised and they've gone the way of the world and the only way to have true fellowship the right way is to get back to meeting in people's homes getting away from organized religion and meeting in people's homes only saves sinners if we're preaching the gospel, this has to do with preaching the gospel and the bible version issue but either way, even when you're trying to preach the gospel, there's times where you've got to get them away from this wicked world and get to them one on one so you can really give them a heart to heart talk. Because when the mob's there, they're going to tend to go with the mob. Or they're going to be scared of the mob. Remember the Bible. I love the Word of God. Do you love the Word of God, Brother Sirius? I love the Word of God. Remember when it came to Jesus? There's people that believed in him, but they wouldn't openly confess him. For they feared being kicked out of the synagogue. They feared it. They feared the mob. They feared the religious leaders, the organized religion. So they wouldn't profess him openly. Remember the blind man that was born blind? That's the main story I'm thinking in my head. The blind man that was born blind, his parents would not confess Jesus Christ because they feared getting kicked out of the synagogue. And they said, ask him. He's of age. Why are you asking us? Don't bring us into it. They feared the mob. Stephen was killed by a mob. You can easily get the mob up, and when you get the mob riled up, are they actually thinking about what they're doing? You're, you're saying crucify Jesus Christ. A week earlier you were saying, Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. And the mob got them so worked up, now they're yelling, crucify him. Crucify him. You can get a mob and people would be fearful of a mob, and you'd get people all riled up in a mob. Especially of people who don't want the truth. And the few that do, they get drowned out. What's the solution? Get away from those people. Get them off to the side. Get them one-on-one. Get them -on -one. Start doing a heart-to-heart -heart gospel preaching. You know, heartfelt. I'm not saying it wasn't heartfelt to begin with, but I'm saying heart-to-heart, -heart, where those people can actually listen. People who want the truth. So we shorten our talk in such a way that afterwards we have been able to clarify our Bible for many more people in a different place. We tried to be as friendly as possible in the presence of the priests and told them after the reading of almost two hours that our Lord does not condemn anyone. Now, real quick, I love my brothers and sisters of Christ over there, but I do have to make a correction. Let's see if we can find it in the Holy Scriptures. Don't you, I think some of you know where I'm going. You guys remember John 3.16? People love John 3.16. I should have been able to just turn to it. <laughs> I don't know why I was looking it up there. Um, John 3.16. John 3. 16. People remember this verse and they say, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. And they love that. I, that's one of the first scriptures I memorized, but I memorized it in a Bible perversion. I didn't memorize it in a King James Bible. I memorized it in a Bible perversion. But they don't like to keep reading. He that believeth on Him is not condemned. But he that believeth not is condemned already. The Lord does not condemn anyone. Yes, he does. Yes, he does. If you reject his son, if you reject repentance towards God, godly sorrow for your personal sins, it's not going from unbelief to belief. Anybody tells you that, stay away from them. If they can't get the gospel right, stay away from them. That's one of my biggest red flags, and I will say this, stay away from them. I know some brethren that have turned their back on true biblical repentance to please other people around them, and they're starting to go back to the pagan easy believism, and they're turning repentance back into going from unbelief to belief. It's a change of heart, and that change of heart is having sorrow, godly sorrow for your personal sins. If they can't get the gospel right, stay away from them. Stay away from them. They could be a brother in Christ that's fallen away, or they're a snake. 
But regardless whether they're a brother in Christ fallen away or a, a, a wolf in sheep's clothing, they're both serving the wrong master. It's just that simple. Okay? But if you reject repentance towards God, faith in our Lord Jesus Christ, confess both in prayer and ask God to save you, and you throw your life, the old man at the foot of the cross, you give your life to Jesus Christ at Calvary, and God saves you and gives you a new life. If you reject that, he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. You know it, a lot of people have head knowledge. It's faith, it's faked, feigned faith, fake faith. They, they're mistaking knowledge for faith. No. Faith is down here. True faith is down here. You miss heaven by 13 inches. Okay. And this is the condemnation. Well, but God doesn't condemn anyone. This And this is the condemnation that light is coming to the world and men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. For everyone that doeth evil hateth the light, neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. But he that doeth truth cometh to the light, that his deeds may be manifest, that they are wrought in God. The changed life. Their deeds determine whether... That's why I was talking to... I was doing some Bible studies and talking with some brethren, and it still comes back. I love that analogy. It's like if you're put on trial for being a Christian and Jesus Christ is the one setting up there. He's, people always make out Jesus Christ like he's the lawyer. Yes, there's one media between man and God, the man Christ Jesus. But the Bible says all judgment has been given to the Son. Jesus Christ is the judge. He's setting up there as the judge. And his word is the authority. And this is what he's going to be judging on. This is his standards. And if you are put on trial for being a Christian today, is there enough evidence to convict you? And today people are, well, I put on my Sunday best, that's nowhere in Scripture. I go to church, that's nowhere in Scripture. I give my 10% tithe, that's Old Testament, that's not for today. That don't mean anything. And so on and so on. All this worldly uh, traditions of men and culture, it's not the Bible. Where's the changed life? Where's the new creature in Christ Jesus? We talked about this, in Christ Jesus. I'm not trying to get into a study because we'll just talk about it. But the point is, is if you reject Jesus Christ, you're condemned. Let's say you don't know Jesus Christ. If you've sinned under the law of sin and death, you are condemned to go to hell. I mean, that's your destination. You're not there yet, but that's your destination. That's the condemnation. Light is coming to the world, and men choose darkness rather than light. God provided a way for you to go to heaven. You reject Jesus Christ. You're condemned. I'm sorry, brother, this is Christ, but I, I disagree with you on that statement. God does condemn people who reject His Son, His real Son, the Jesus Christ of the King James Bible, not the Antichrist of the Catholic Church. The lowercase g, God, the Son of the Catholic Church. They reject the capital S Son of God. We just read that in there. The capital S Son of God. The name of the only begotten capital S Son of God. Born of, derived from, only begotten. God, the Father, the soul, manifest in the flesh. Jesus said, I'm in the Father, and the Father is in me. The soul of Jesus Christ is God the Father. But it's capital S Son of God. That shows connection. That shows they're one. They're connected. Of. We've done, we did a huge study on this, of, of. But they take away the of and say, God the Son, they make Jesus a separate false God. Their Jesus is a separate false God. But does the Lord condemn anyone? Yes, He does. If you reject the truth, then you are now under God's condemnation. God's wrath and God's judgments upon you. He hath wet his wet so the sword, whetstone in the Old Testament. He hath bent his bow. He has made it straight. If you don't repent, he'll kill you and send you to hell. And then get, you'll get tossed in the lake of fire for all eternity. But I understand the fear. Please, brother, shall have some grace. The fear. But that they should think carefully about whom they serve. They should think carefully about whom they serve. Absolutely. 
In the end, they made peace with this and we were able to leave free and unharmed to the other place where we had another three hours. We talked about the King James Bible and how it has changed us as people and as a family. A lot of people had never heard of this in, the, in this country, but knew it existed. Every time they asked their pastor in their church, which they went to, to every week, the priest said, this is an unworthy, as unworthy and lies-filled book that totally distorts the truth about the gospel. Just stay away from it. Just stay away from it. These people know better now, and some of them even cried when they heard these words. They start reading from what the scriptures had to say compared to the lies they've been told. And I'm telling you right now, uh, like I said, I'm not trying to support. I, I, I got frustrated with Brother David Daniels because he started compromising uh, when he, with his translation. That really bugged me that he started using uh, Bible perversion translations in his uh, Spanish translation. And he didn't stick with the King James Bible. Um, but I remember him putting out a video that the day he cried, and my testimony is similar. When I realized the Bible version issue and I started learning all the truth that I was lied about, it was tears. Lord, I was lied to. They lied to me. They kept the truth from me in these Babel buildings, these so-called organized religion, these non-denominational is what I was growing up in. We went through a few Baptist buildings, but even they lied. They didn't teach us the King James Bible, because some Baptists aren't King James Bible believers, and right now I think most of them aren't. They hold the traditions of men above the Word of God. But I was lied to my whole life. Dave Daniels like, my whole life I was lied to. And when the truth was presented to him, it brings a tear to your eyes of joy, sorrow that you were lied to, but of joy that God, this is the truth. These people were really happy and very grateful to hear this and asked if they could buy this Bible somewhere. That's what this ministry, is for, as part of this ministry, has kind of changed a little bit where it's now becoming, we're trying to get King James Bibles to people who want King James Bibles. Every time people ordered it, the order was canceled by their priests because they could not request any other Bible than a Catholic Bible. You, Brothers of Christ, do you understand the control they have over there? I, I thank God that we still have the freedom to buy this book. We still have the freedom to print this book out. I can get, I got tons of Bibles here. I hand Bibles out to people who want Bibles. But there's countries where they can't seem to get Bibles, no matter how hard they try. And this is an example of that. The Catholic Church is blocking them. Everything in that region is monitored online and goes through a committee of priests and deans. Everything must be must give way to the doctrinal faith of the church, the Catholic Church, I think is what they're talking about. People had given up hope because of this and were always living in fear. We are happy that in this way we can help them to provide a Bible that stands for faith in our Lord. God's perfect written word, the King James Bible. That they will soon be able to see the many differences that are written in contrast to their Bible. And because of this, perhaps that they become stronger and go against the moral backlash or blackmail backlash blackmail of these servants of the devil we currently already have an order for eight bibles noted when we left many other people have already given their address details for even more orders for bibles praise god praise god uh, please pray for this ministry brother says christ that we can keep getting bibles to them Families with, uh, I, I keep, real quick, I keep talking, a little side note, I keep talking with the Lord, like, Lord, if we get into a civil war here in America, I won't be able to send Bibles over. If we get into some kind of a World War III and everything's going crazy, the time for getting Bibles out, is, is it's going to be hindered, if not stopped. So I keep praying, it's not happening, let's get as many Bibles out as we possibly can. I'm not fearing, I'm keeping my eyes on Jesus Christ, this is the mission. Not what goes on in the world, but I'm not blind to what's going on in the world. 
Okay, I just want the brethren to know that. I'm not blind to what's going on in the world. I understand that, door, that God opens doors. He opened a door for them to go somewhere else, praise God. And God closes doors. Okay, doors could, God could close some doors. He could say, okay, enough's enough. I'm closing doors. But until those doors close, keep, please keep praying for this ministry. Uh, my a part, um, Like I said, we're all part of Paul's ministry, which is Jesus' ministries. Be ye followers of me as I am of Christ. He's the apostle to the Gentiles. This is the time of the Gentiles. Salvation goes out to the world. Anybody can get saved, Jew or Gentile. Okay? But we're all part of the same ministry. One body, we have many members, different gifts, but one body, one ministry. All right, please pray for the ministry. Pray for my usefulness in the ministry when it comes to getting Bibles to people who want Bibles. Because it looks like we're going to be hammered in the next few months. Praise God. Praise God. We're trying to get Bibles out. And speaking of which, I've already ordered four Bibles for them. Uh, so you pr keep praying that the Bibles come in. And if the orders are right, <laughs> I struggle with the orders trying to, cause my hand, I already talked about this, my hand shakes. Trying to get the orders shipped out. Uh, it's just paperwork. I'm not a big fan of paperwork anymore. Anybody that's been in a career where they have to sign millions of papers, I was military, um, you get to a point where you're just not a big fan of paperwork. I'm not a big fan of paperwork. But details even more uh, orders for Bibles. Families with children, poor and abandoned families, elderly people. We promised them that we would deliver them, but not all at once. Okay? The goal and mission for, the, for, for what we're talking about here is praying for them as they're doing the work of the Lord and trying to get God's perfect written word in their hands. And you would be shocked, brother, says Christ, what just putting this in someone's hands can do. I always tell people, you know what led me to Christ? Well, the gospel led you. No, the Bible version issue. When somebody finally put God's word in my hands and, and got me to say, got me to believe, this is it, this is God's perfect written word, it was then that the true plan of salvation that's found in the King James Bible was to make it down here. And that's what led me to Christ. Having God's perfect written words in my hands. And I pray and thank God for the people that stood up for the Bible version issue, that did the work. Some of them have fallen away since then, but Brother and Sister Christ, it's amazing what you can do when you put a, the Word of God, the perfect written Word of God, in someone's hands that wants it. i got to throw that in there, that wants it. I've given Bibles to people that have probably thrown them in the garbage, but I've given Bibles to people that want them. And God does the rest. It's amazing. They were very happy about this. So we would like to order at least eight Bibles if possible. They are going to share it with the rest of the group of people for the time being. Maybe we can order four Bibles every month. This goes back to the Bible. I'm trying to figure out how we can afford getting some of these Bibles out. And I let them know. But that's the, that's the gist of what they had to go through. I just wanted to give an update what we were praying for. They went... They were preaching that this, showing that the Bible version issue, that this is God's Word, and trying to give it to them because they've already got all these ideas, these fables, traditions of men, indoctrination, and right now the biggest push is just saying, hey, this is the real Word of God. And if you can get this in their hands and they can start reading from this and start learning what this, the real Word of God has to say, and that this is the final authority and this is what you need to follow, That'll get them to the true plan of salvation. That'll lead people to Christ. We thank our Lord for this difficult yet satisfying trip and teaching the Word of God. We thank our Lord for our prayers and support during this journey and hope that we may continue to fight against this injustice that is being done to many people around the world. Sincere, the brother and sister in Christ. Brother says Christ, thank you, thank you, thank you for praying for them. Please continue to pray for them and all the brethren, the evangelists that are trying to go out there and they're trying to lead people to Christ. Give them the God's perfect written word. Set up churches, even though they're house churches. We need to keep praying. It just seems like it's died down. We think it's not happening that much, but it's still happening. Right now it's raining hard and it's trying to decide whether it wants to hail or rain. 
So, um, so I'm going to end this, but thank you for your prayers. That was the update. I'm praying for them, and that's the ministry that's going on over there in Belgium. And the ministry we have here, we're trying to support them as best we can. And the number one way we're supporting them is the prayer and the Word of God. Encouraging them with the Word of God and giving them the Word of God to give to people. So please keep praying for this ministry. And I'll end it with grace and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Keep praying for that ministry too. The, the ministry and people's usefulness in the ministry. So grace and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all and my love for you which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Thank you for watching and thank you for your prayers.